Bible Q&A Sunday. We used to do this back in the, back in the day, but we're, we're doing it again today. So, uh, you know, just I'm not going to start on one side or whatever. Just we we'll just have to go random. And uh, of course, you know, I can't see you if you raise your hand. So <laughs> just just say, Pastor. You know, I got a question. So who wants to kick us off? Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Miss Ramona. <laughs> Yes. Are they literal witnesses or is it the Jews and the Christians? Okay. Lord Jesus, as we seek to answer these questions today, we ask for your holy wisdom and for the illumination of the recorded revelation of your word. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. They are literally two people. Okay? They're, they're two literal people. Um, we also see a testimony of a, a similar event back in Zechariah uh, of the two witnesses. Um, at that point, um, fascinating book, so it's hard to know. If you're, at that point, I, I believe it's, it's referring to uh, Joshua and, uh, and Zerubbabel. Uh, but in the Revelation, it's uh, two Jewish men, okay, uh, now here's something uh, just uh, as a point because there are people that have taught and, and I'll, I'll prove why it's men and not just Christians and Jews in a second. But um, some have, have made an assertion that might be true, but when I've heard this assertion made, they state it as fact and they do so on a false basis. And this is what they say. They say, well, the two witnesses have to be uh, uh, Moses, Moses and Elijah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, it might be, and one of the reasons they say that is the two witnesses are endued with miracle working power. They turn water into blood. Who did that? Moses. Okay? They can call fire down from heaven and devour their enemies. Who did that? Elijah. So it might be Moses and Elijah. But here's the false pretense that they say it. They say it because the Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. Say, well, Elijah never died, right? right. And uh, how did they get around the Moses thing? Because Moses died. Um, but Okay, maybe that's what they say. Maybe they say it's Enoch and Elijah. Well, it sounds more like Moses though. So you're right. They say it's Enoch and Elijah because Enoch was raptured and Elijah was raptured. Yes. And they said because of that, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. So everybody has to die and they didn't. So it's got to be them. Wrong. Because 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and following says there is a big full-blown rapture coming when the dead in Christ rise first. Then we which are alive will remain to be caught together with them in the clouds. There's a whole bunch of us that are never going to die. So the Hebrews 9, 20, it's a 26 or 27, whatever it is, passage is a general reality. In general, everybody dies once. No reincarnation. You get one shot. And then you face the judgment of God. But there are exceptions. Enoch was an exception. Elijah was an exception. And a whole bunch of us are going to be an exception when the trumpet sounds at the resurrection rapture. Amen. So that's, that's a, a, a false narrative. So I just want to clear that up. Um, could be. Could be Moses. Could be Elijah. Uh, Moses and Elijah did appear to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Remember? Yes. Right? They left heaven. They're both in heaven. They came down back to the earth. You know? And, uh, and there they appeared. And the disciples saw them. And um, so how we know it's it's who, whoever. It doesn't have to be them. Couldn't be just Two Jews that are alive at that time. Right? right? And, and that's my personal belief. My personal belief is it's two Jews in Israel that God picks that are alive during the tribulation period. I don't think it's Moses and Elijah coming back. No. That's that's my personal belief. Um, so um, I think it's it's but the reason we know it's real men is because after they have wrought great distress upon the Antichrist and his efforts to you know, rule the world. 
uh, and they've been witnesses for God and for his word, amen, it says that the Antichrist is allowed to overpower them and kill them. And that their bodies are put on public display for three and a half days in the streets of Jerusalem. And you know, back then when that was written 2,000 years ago, uh, it says the whole world will look upon them. Well, 2,000 years ago, you think, well, how could that be? But now we've got Telstar, we've got television, we've got global TV. Every day we turn on our TV, we're watching stuff going on halfway around the world in Israel. So the cameras will be there. You know, All the news stations will be there. And these guys will be killed. They'll put on public display. It says the world celebrates and sends gifts to everybody. Some people say, well, it must happen at Christmas time. Maybe. Maybe. But everybody exchanges gifts. Because these men, these prophets of God, these two witnesses, tormented the ungodly on the earth. So everybody's happy that they've been killed. But God's not done yet. That's right. After three and a half days, it says the breath of life comes into them. And they're resurrected from the dead. And they stand back up on their feet. That'll freak some people out. Yep. On live television. Yeah. Right? Think about this. And it says that then they're raptured up. Then they're caught up. Like, like when Jesus ascended off the Mount of Olives. So they're resurrected back to life. And they're, they go up into the clouds. And they go to heaven. So it's two literal men. Can you follow up on that? No? I have one pastor. Yes, sir. Well, I was just telling you, we were listening to, the pastor's name was David Jeremiah. Mm, he he's got a new book out. Yes. And David he, Jeremiah has a new book out on the rapture. That's what yes. he was preaching on last night. And time. he is, like we are, a pre-tribulation rapture guy. Yeah. So he and, was talking about salvation during the tribulation. So right, he talked okay. about the two men. Now, he said Elijah and Moses. And okay. then after so, they're raptured again, the 144,000 Jews, 12,000 from each of the tribes, then they cover the earth and they just minister to people to try to get themselves. They're like evangelists. Exactly, the 144,000. Then after them, the angel comes to like try to save the to last, the, to preach, to save the last of them. So, I mean, literally, Mike and I were in the car sitting listening because we turned the car off, we couldn't hear it anymore. What do you think about that whole, like, Salvation during tribulation. Because oh, yeah. I had thought it like, wasn't going to happen no. at that point. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing. God gives everybody a chance during the tribulation to hear the gospel and to turn and be saved. Yes. There's one caveat. Yes. <clears throat> the mark of the beast. Yeah. Right. Right. If you take the mark of the beast, <clears throat> there's no turning back. Right? Yeah. Because the mark of the beast on your right hand or on your forehead... Um, and it, it won't be a 666. The 666 says, says uh, this is the, the number of the name of the beast. Okay? So it's a name. It's a, And what it really is, it's, it's I pledge allegiance to the beast. It's, it's your, your, just like we, we surrender our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? What does the Bible tell us? He tells us that we have to, if we try to keep our life, we'll lose it. But if we lose our life for Christ's sake, we'll find it, right? Find it, yeah. So we give up our lives to follow Jesus. And, uh, and I need to preach that more. But, yeah. but um, this is kind of the same thing. You're saying, I give my allegiance, my worship to this. I mean, they'll be deceived. They'll think it's Messiah. Right. Okay? And the false prophet puts up an image. Okay, that's when the Jews realize right then and there, the sin Messiah because he's breaking the first two commandments. Right. Of the Ten Commandments. You're not supposed to make an image and you're not supposed to bow down to an image. And they just made an image of this dude and they're telling everybody to bow down. If you don't bow down and worship the image and take the mark, we're going to cut your head off. Yeah. And without the mark, you can't buy or sell. So there's a lot of incentive to take the mark. Okay. So once you take the mark, Revelation 14 is very clear. That you cannot be saved, and it says the smoke of your torment will ascend forever and forever. Hell is eternal. Hell is eternal. There's no escape. So, but, but, apparently, um, in, in, in fact, in fact, not apparently, but I'll, I'll get there in a second. Um, God warns people, God makes it very clear. Not to take the mark. Okay? 
the, the, the issuing of the, the, the image at the temple and the issuing of the mark is mid-trib. Trib, the tribulation period is Daniel's 70th week. It's a seven-year period. Yeah. In the middle of that, right, that's when Antichrist invades Israel and sets himself up in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He will claim to be God in the temple of God. The false prophet, who says that the Antichrist would be more of a, a governmental uh, type of figure, politician figure. The false prophet's the religious figure. Because yeah. the false prophet says, has horns like a lamb, but a mouth like the dragon. Yeah. Okay? Uh, personally, no offense to my Roman Catholic friends, but I believe the false prophet will be the Pope of Rome. There are actually Catholics that have written about that in ages past and said the same thing. There's, a, there's an ancient prophecy back in the 13th century about the last pope. Uh, and it says that he will be evil. Anyway, by Roman Catholic. This is a Roman Catholic prophecy. And um, so, um, so yes, yeah, so at, at that point in, in the scenario, and I don't know if this will line up with, line up with what David Jeremiah is saying or not, but in my study of the book of Revelation, uh, we have... Um, the false prof. I mean, the false prof. We have the two witnesses and the 144,000 leading up to that point, mid trip. At the mid trip, they're all raptured out of here. See, right now, angels can't preach the gospel. Only you and I can preach the gospel. Amen. So what God does is we're gone. See, that's another proof of a pre-trib rapture: the fact that He calls these two witnesses and another 144,000 Jews seals them and they begin to preach shows the church isn't here so he's having to raise up Jewish evangelists to preach to the world but at, yes at some point he raptures them out too okay well the 144,000 get raptured the two witnesses get killed and then resurrected and raptured yeah. at that point angels preach angels preach and if you can read there's three angels and it says they fly throughout the whole world. And each one of the angels has a different message. I love it. One of them is worship God, the creator of heaven and earth. In other words, it starts out with get rid of your thinking about evolution. Quit believing in evolution. God's the creator of all things. So the first angel just turns people to come back to God as your creator. Amen? Yeah, amen. But then... I can't remember if it's the second or third angel, says, do not take the mark of the beast. So people are warned by an angel flying through the air not to receive the mark of the beast on their right hand or on their forehead because they will be damned if they do. So what that tells us is everybody who takes that mark does so willingly in the in the rejection of a message by a holy angel flying through the air. So they will rightly and justly receive their punishment in hell. They choose the things of this world to have food, to have bread, to have you know, food on the table, to be able to get gasoline, to keep a job. Uh, I take the mark, I can buy, I can sell. I, I don't have to die. I don't have to have my head chopped off. So in other words, they love their lives more than they love God. And right then the Bible says in that context is he who dies in the Lord from this point on is blessed. Blessed to see who dies in the Lord from this point on. And remember it says, of the devil, it says that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. So you've got to be willing to die for the Lord. You've got to be willing to reject the Antichrist. You hear the angel, you've got to say, I'm willing to lose my life to save him. That's what Jesus said. If you try to keep your life, you'll lose it. If you'll lose your life for my sake, you'll keep it. you got to say, chop it off. Come on. Bring it on. I'm not taking that mark. You can't buy or sell. You're going to starve to death. Well, let's just let's get her done there. Yeah. Kids, come on. Wife, come on. Line up. Let's line up. I'll go first. Daddy will go first. You know. Let's get this done, guys. Guess what? We get to go be with Jesus. Yeah. Son, death, son, glory. Yeah. But that's what it's going to take. But, but a lot of people are selfish. A lot of people, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have my head chopped off. I'd rather have my temporal satisfaction. I'd rather be able to still keep a job and buy and sell and eat and, and, and gas in my car and be free 
be free than die for Jesus. So a lot of people will take the mark. Was that kind of the question? Can people get saved? Absolutely, they can. And they will be warned not to take the mark and to believe in God and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and there, it, there are many who will be killed. There are many who, for whatever reason, they didn't receive Jesus before the pre-trib rapture. But somehow, they get the message. And uh, and and they, they realize, wow, this is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. I remember... You know, my friend, my aunt, my brother, my sister used to harp on this stuff all the time. Wow, it's coming to pass, just like they used to say it would. And, and, and they're going to find a Bible. And so, so there are people who are going to get saved. And yeah, there's preachers preaching to them, and ultimately angels. Is that kind of the question? Was it can people get saved, or will people get saved? Or I what? always thought, like, if you were stuck in the trib, you were stuck in for seven years. So the you are. Was gr- you are. You are, except you let's get beheaded. Well, what? Right. But then you exit. Right, so the fact that you can be saved during tribulation was, I, for whatever yeah. reason, didn't Yeah, do, you, I mean, you're still stuck in it. Correct. And there's a good chance you're going to get caught. Because, I mean, because the Antichrist is, it's, you know, look, look, at, look at all the digital surveillance and everything they've got now, you know. I mean, it's going to be hard to escape his No, reach. but I thought there was, like, no option. Like, if you were, if you were here after the rapture, right. then that was it. That there was no potential for salvation. There is, there, there is, absolutely, yes. absolutely. Was, so it was a great message to listen to, and the way he explained right. it, just the way you did, was actually really good to hear for right. people that are I know that love that aren't saved. Yeah. You know, so it gives right. me some hope. So don't them. don't give up on it. Correct. Right. right, but the fact that they won't accept Jesus Christ now, now, then when they're under a gun to take the mark. It's, it's going to be a lot more difficult. Right. It's going to be a lot more difficult. But maybe they'll just... Say and and, and to, to, to Sherry's point, um, 2 Thessalonians says that God will send them a strong delusion mm-hmm. that they will believe the lie, the yeah. lie being that the Antichrist is yeah. Christ. Yeah. Because yeah. they received not the love of the truth, yeah. mm-hmm. but had pleasure rather in unrighteousness. Yes. Yeah. See, they didn't want to turn from their life of sin. They didn't want to give their life to Jesus become one of those weird Christian people. Hey, news headline, we're not weird. We're the coolest, most bad donkey people on the planet. Because we know the truth. And we're full of the Holy Ghost. And we're full of the fire of God. And we're the ones that know reality. You are the weird ones out there that believe in evolution. You are the weirdos. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it will be hard because people will, because they have rejected it now, what's going to make them receive it then? Right. Yeah. Question. But some do. So there is hope. Pastor, my question went along with hers. Okay, then. I saw a email post from a very major Pentecostal ministry okay. who made the statement at the rapture, babies and children who belong to unsaved parents will not go up to heaven. And I thought, I can't believe I'm reading this. If they are under the age accountability, I know the Bible doesn't specifically point out children. Right. They mention the age of accountability, which there isn't actually a specific age given. But I want to see what you think about that. That kind of okay. threw me. Why would a child or a baby have to go through a tribulation if their parent, because their parents weren't saved? Right. The headship, um, in other words. They're under a headship of a non-saved person. Right. Um, I tend to lead toward the, your belief as you do, okay. uh, that they will go. However... I think why why they say that because you're, you're correct. There isn't a definitive you know verse we can turn to that says and all those under the age of accountability go to. It says the dead in Christ and we which are alive, and we who believe in the Lord, will go too. So what they're saying is if they're uh, and by the, the the only age of accountability I can find in the Bible is 20 years of age and up. Because yeah. that's when Israel came out of the promised land. Yeah. And they were, I mean, 
came out of Egypt to go into the promised land. And they sent the 12 spies in. They saw the Nephilim, the giants. And, and Joshua and Caleb, two of the 12 spies, said, we can take the land. The other 10 were fearful. Instead of operating in faith, they operated in fear. They said, there's no way we can take the land. The giants are there. And the people listened to the 10 instead of the 2. And because they, they did not have faith in God, God punished them. By all that generation died in the wilderness over the next 40 years. But if you read it, it says, all those who were 20 years of age and older. So in that instance, if you were 19, if you were a teenager or a child, you were exempt from that punishment. And you survived those 40 years. And that generation, they call it the Joshua generation. Really, these guys were a lot younger than Joshua. But mm -hmm. they, they made it in. They made it in. Um, but back to the point. Um, there's a verse. And, and forgive me for not being able to tell you the exact chapter and verse it's in. But it's in Paul's writings. And he's talking about... Uh, if you're married to somebody and you're a believer and they're not, yeah. yes. right? Yeah. Uh, to do everything you can to you know, keep the marriage together. Now, if they leave, uh, oh, it's 1 Corinthians 7. Yeah. Thank they you, Lord. If they leave, you're free. So if you're married to an unbeliever and they say, I, I'm tired of this, I'm tired of you going to church every Sunday, I'm tired of all this singing in the kitchen stuff, I can't take it anymore. I'm out of here. It says you're free. What that means is you can go remarry them. Yeah. Okay. So of course, God does. God also in that same passage says He wants us to live at peace. So if you're being physically abused and it won't yeah. stop, you're also you can get free from that too. Yes. And of course, Jesus said also for adultery. Now you don't have to get divorced if adultery occurs, but you can. You can also forgive, right? But sometimes it's just ongoing and ongoing, and you forgive and you forgive and you just keep it. And at some point, you say, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this, and uh, and then you're also free. But back to the point. Back to the point. Is, so in that passage, if you're married to an unbeliever, right, it said, it says, because of you, because just one of the parents is a believer, that your children are therefore holy. Yeah. So it's implying that if there are no Christian parents, the children are unholy. That's where they get that from. Okay. Because of that. If you have at least one Christian parent, the children are under that covering. Now, when they become whatever the age of accountability is, and they go up and they go out of the house, they got to get saved. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But as long as they're under the, the, the lead headship of the parent, and at least one of them is Christian, those kids are considered holy. So, that's, I think, where they get that. I'm a little surprised they were kind of emphatic about it, it seems like. Yes, they were. Um, I wouldn't be emphatic uh, one way or the other, to be honest. I, I'm, I lean toward you. I believe the kids will go. Uh, I believe the stupid teenagers will probably go too. You know, <laughs> that's so stupid. You know, um, so I, I believe the teenagers and the kids do go. Uh, I wouldn't be emphatic and guarantee it because I can't. I think they do. So for them to be emphatic and say they're not going. If the parents are Christian, none of the kids go too. Seems a little, little seems a little on shaky ground. They've got only the really that, as far as I know, that one verse. And and when when you're going to base when you're going to build a doctrine, you want to have at least two witnesses. And as far as I know, that's the only verse that talks about the kids being holy, implying that some are unholy. Uh, I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't have done what they did. It just was disturbing because why would an innocent baby have to stay right. just because right. their parents never accepted it? Right. Yeah, I, th I think the, baby, the baby's going. Okay. How about, I know it's going to sound silly, but please bear with me. How about our dogs? Oh, my we love playing. Don't tell me there's no dogs in heaven. There are dogs in heaven. There are. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you how I know. It's sad if my dogs were there are, I'll, I'll tell you how I know. Now, my mother-in-law would argue with me about this. My mother-in-law was not a dog person. But, um, I'll tell you why I believe dogs are in heaven. First of all, we know there's animals in heaven. Okay? Horses, we're going to ride them. Okay? Um, so if there's horses, there's probably all kinds of other animals too. Re remember, uh, God created this universe, this world, right? So this is God's taste. 
This is this is what God likes. And you know, the animal kingdom is amazing. These creatures are amazing, right? Uh, what they can do, I mean, um, it's just incredible. They're, they're just fascinating. Uh, and and, and they're, they're, they, the animals in whom is the breath of life, which is land animals and birds, not insects and not fish. No right? serpents. No serpents. Well, no serpents in heaven, that's for sure. No snakes. <laughs> no snakes, that's for sure. But, but the animals have a breath of life in them. Well, what did God do when he created Adam? He made him his body out of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. What was that? That was his soul. The spirit. So uh, Psalm, Psalm 104, speaking of God renewing the animal kingdom, it says, you know, when he, he takes away their breath, in fact, I think this is in, uh, uh, I can look this up, Cindy. I believe it's in Ecclesiastes. It says, and speaking of the animals, he takes their breath and it returns to God. Well, what's their breath? That's their soul. And in Psalm 104, it talks about the animals. It says, and he sends his spirit, and they are created, and he renews the face of the earth. So every land animal and every bird has a soul, a spirit inside it. Now, it's not one that needs to get redeemed by the blood of the land because they don't sin. Animals aren't evil. I, I, I corrected myself last week when I talked about the, 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 the uh, Hamas terrorists. And the, and the week before that, I said, these people are animals. I came back last week, I said, no, they're not. They're worse than animals aren't evil. Animals don't kill for the love of it. They don't kill just because they're evil. If they kill, it's because they're hungry and they need something to eat. Yes. These people are worse than animals. Yes. Okay. Now, but animals do have, and if you have a dog, or you know, you can actually interact. You know, Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden with all the animals, and and had you know fellowship with them. Um, animals are cool, and those of us who own dogs know that you can have a relationship. You can, in fact, they. You can say a word, and they'll know what you mean. Right? So they understand, not in the same way we do, but there are certain things that if you associate it with you know, their food, or uh, you know, we had one basset hound that loved to grab socks out of the dirty clothes hamper, and then he'd bring it to you, and he wants you to grab the other end of the sock and play tug of war with him, right? And you could say to that dog, go get me a sock. He'd take off. Go find a sock and come back with it. Let's play. See, so there, there's an intelligence. There's a level of intelligence. There is emotion. Okay? Uh, they get happy. They get sad. They get angry. You know, they'll growl, whatever. Uh, and um, the verse says there, he takes their soul and it returns to God. I believe uh, that God in his goodness and, and in his, his grace and his mercy who gives us the desires of our heart. If you've had animals that you were close to, I think they're going to be there. And to add to that, and of course, anybody's testimony has to be judged by Scripture. Right? But there are people who have died and gone to heaven and their dogs were there. Now, you know, judge that against Scripture, but, you know, they, they died and then they came back. You know, they got resuscitated or whatever. And um, and they said their dogs were there, so I, I believe they are. I have a question. Yes, sir, roll. What what does it mean, or what what comes after? Either either what does it mean, or what comes after, or however you want to answer it. When you when you're when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. What, what 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 comes after that? Okay. Yeah, what comes after, or what does it mean? <clears throat> okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on both of those. First of all, uh, when you're baptized, everybody in the Bible that was baptized in the Holy Spirit had an initial physical evidence of speaking in other tongues, as the Spirit gave the utterance. Yes. Um, now you could you could have when you're born again, you're born of the Spirit. The Spirit of God is in us. Okay, but there's being born of the Spirit and being baptized with the Spirit are two different things. Being born of the Spirit is necessary to go to heaven. Because we, we lost that in the Garden of Eden. We were connected with God 
And that's why when he says, the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. They didn't drop over dead. But what did happen to them? All of a sudden they realized they were naked. So instead of being God aware, they became self aware. Why? What happened? God's spirit left them. There was a change in their nature as soon as they disobeyed God and ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so they lost the fellowship, the connection of he who is life itself, God. And so we have to receive the spirit of God again to become born again so we can enter the kingdom of heaven. So that's our salvation. But then Jesus said, in fact, it started with John the Baptist. He said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. There's your salvation. But he that comes after me is mightier than I whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Well, you can study the four Gospels and there's nowhere in there that Jesus ever baptized anybody with the Holy Spirit and fire while he was on the earth. It wasn't until he was resurrected. And in the book of Acts, in chapter 1, he's being assembled together with them. He commanded them. In fact, I go back to Luke 24, the end of Luke. Now, we know Luke and Acts are both written by Luke. So you've got to take the end of Luke 24 and combine it with the beginning of the book of Acts. Because it's kind of like volume 1 and volume 2 by Dr. Luke. And at the end of chapter 24 of Luke, he's quoting the words of Jesus. He's resurrected. And he, he, he says, for, he says you'll, you'll go and, 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 and preach to all nations the forgiveness of sins in my name. Right? Yeah. He says, so go into all nations and tell them about the forgiveness of sins that you can receive in my name. But wait. He says, but wait. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And that's how Luke gets. So he says, I'm, sending, I'm giving you a great commission. Don't go yet. Because you can't go in your own human power. Even though you're, if you're born in the Spirit, you need more than that. You need supernatural power. So Amen. wait. Wait until you're endued with power from on high. Well, what's that mean? So it, it, it's a little bit of a mystery until you go to the book of Acts. And Luke then quotes more detailed of what Jesus said that day. It says, that being assembled together with them, he commanded them, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. So now, uh, in, in fact, back in Luke, it says that. I'm, I didn't I did quote Luke properly. It says, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem uh, uh, until you be endued with power. Somewhere in there it says, wait for the promise of the Father. And you will be endued with power from on high. So Luke 1, Acts 1, I mean, it says, so being assembled together, he commanded them. So it's a command. Don't depart from Jerusalem until... You receive the promise of the Father. And then he adds this. It's not in Luke, it's in Acts. So he was with him for 40 days. The day of Pentecost is how many days after resurrection? 50. Yeah. Right? 50 days. He says, so it's 10 days from now is what he's, he's talking about Pentecost. He says, for not for you shall receive the Holy Ghost. For, help me, Lord. For you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Luke says, wait until you're endued with power from on high. Acts 1 says, for you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And what's the purpose of the power? And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the othermost part of the earth. So there's the great commission to go into all the world. But wait until you're endued with power. He reiterates it in Acts chapter 1. He says, it was not many days from now. You're going to be, receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Okay? So they're waiting. Pentecost comes. They're all gathered. They're there. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. They're gathered at the temple. All of a sudden, a mighty rushing wind comes into the temple. And they see tongues of fire come out of heaven. And there's about 120 believers. And it says tongues of fire. It says, and, and, and they're, they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what's the first thing they do? And began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. What did those other tongues result in? It resulted in people being attracted to them, number one. Number two, supernaturally hearing them declaring the gospel in their own native tongues. Because Jews from every nation under heaven that spoke other tongues had gathered there because Pentecost is one of the mandatory feasts. And they heard the gospel and then... Some of them mocking, saying, ah, oh, these men are drunk on new wine. And after you see Peter stands up with the eleven and says, Ye men of Israel, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem this day, hearken unto me. 
Hearken to my words, for these men are not drunken as you suppose, but this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Ah, now we're getting another piece to the puzzle. So now we know what Jesus said in Luke 24 and referred to in Acts 1, that don't go out yet and win the world to be until you're endued with power from on high is a fulfillment of Joel chapter 2's prophecy. And Peter says, this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel, for it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And even your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. And on my handmaidens, on my servants, I will pour on my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. So Joel prophesied the day was coming, instead of just a king or a priest being anointed, that God was going to anoint everybody with the spirit of God so they could all prophesy. They could all preach, they could all witness for Jesus. That was fulfilled on Acts chapter 1 and 2, the day of Pentecost. So the baptism with the Spirit is when you receive Jesus' New Testament ministry, never did it while he's on the earth, but once he ascended back to heaven on the day of Pentecost to fulfill that feast, from his throne he poured out the Holy Spirit upon all those that were gathered there in the temple that day, 120. Not all, but the 120 <coughs> believers. you got to be a believer. And they got filled with the Spirit, and then you see them throughout the book of Acts it's not just a one-time thing. You see them getting refillings, and, and that filling gives them boldness. So the purpose of the baptism with the Spirit, the purpose of the birth of the Spirit is to get saved and go to heaven. The purpose of the baptism with the Spirit is to have supernatural boldness to tell people about Jesus. But let's face it, when we're newborn Christians, we're shy about that. We're scared. We're scared to tell people about Jesus because we know we might get rejected. They might laugh at us. But man, I've seen people transform uh, when they were shy and, and we pray for them and they get filled with the Holy Ghost, start speaking in tongues. Next thing you know, they're out telling people about Jesus. Amen. They got a boldness. They got a boldness. Okay. So the baptism with the Spirit is a baptism of boldness to witness for Jesus. How do you know if you've got it? Everybody in the Bible, you can trace it throughout the book of Acts, and uh, every one of them uh, spoke in tongues. Spoke in tongues. So that's the difference. And once you receive it, you need to keep exercising it. Because you can get filled with the Spirit, and if you don't uh, stay filled, it'll wane. You won't lose it, but it'll wane. So we need to do like Jude says, Jesus' half-brother in Jude verse 20. He says, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That means praying in tongues. Amen. Uh, Ephesians 6 talks about uh, one of our weapons is the Word of God and prayer, praying always with all supplication for all saints in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. That means praying in tongues. Follow up to that? Uh, question? Or? No, I just, no. I just Pastor, I have a question. So, so here's the question. So, if you have not yet been baptized in the Spirit, see, wasn't that long ago we, you guys all got baptized in water. What a glorious day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what happened on that day? You were immersed in water. Mm -hmm. You were overwhelmed with water. Well, that's what the baptism with the Spirit is like. Yes. It's just, you get immersed in the Spirit. Instead of being just born of the Spirit, being born of the Spirit is like having a seed planted in you, a seed of life, of the Spirit of God. And then as you nurture that seed of life in you, it'll grow, right? But being baptized with the Spirit is just that. You're immersed. The word baptized means immersed, overwhelmed with. I, I, uh, I have to believe that. I spoke with Stephen about this on the phone right after. I called him that in the same night, but I believe that I was baptized in the, in the Holy Spirit. At the same time as it, with the water? No, I, this happened just the other day. Oh, tell, tell us about it. You want to share it? Or? Uh, I, was, I, was, I was stuck in indecision. This was, um, this was, uh, it was at night, and I came in just ready to go to bed, and I was, my brain was racked, you know, with... Life. Should I, should I, yeah, life. life. I, I didn't know what to do. Cares you know, of this world, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what to do. It happens always. And, and, uh, and, you know, I, I was telling my wife about it, and I started, you know, I was just like, I was just all about God. I want to take him everywhere I go, you know, so right. I, I mean, I received a new little tiny insights about 
what that means, you know, as I as I continue on in life, I still keep, you know, receiving little insights of what it is to, you know, carry God with you everywhere you go. And so, you know, I started praying and I started, you know, as I was speaking to my wife, I was, you know, just telling God, I came to a realization that, you know, I, I don't care if you say anything or if you help me, but just your presence, it just there, just be there with me and I'm good, you know. And just that is enough for me, because any anything more that I could ask for is just way too much for me to ask you for anything. Because I don't, I just need you, to, your presence. Amen. Amen. And, and I was, as I was saying that, I felt, I just felt something inside of me like ignite, and just it was like I, the only way that I can explain it is it was uncontrollable. My body was uncontrollable. I felt it through all, all my limbs, my legs, my head. Mm. I didn't have no clue. I knew that it was, I knew that it was God. I was crying. Uh, um, it was hot, but like ice cold. Like I wasn't cold, but it, it didn't burn me. But it felt like it should be burning me. And I felt it through all my whole body, and I had words in my head, and I, I spoke them, but not very loudly, but enough to know that they were not my own words. I didn't know the meaning of them, and. Um, and I just kept. So they were in a language you did not know. Yeah, we're that's right. it, brother. And then I just, it just kept. It just kept. It didn't want to go away. That's it. I thought I was gonna pass out. So, so let, 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 can, can we exercise it? What? Can, 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 can you try to speak a few of those words? It was, it was, it was like, it was like. Stand up. I just want to encourage you. Yeah, you, you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost on fire. Yes. Okay. These words came in. You may not remember where they are right now, but I just want to encourage you to just, just surrender your tongue to the Lord. And I'm just going to pray in tongues, and, and whatever comes to you, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for baptizing my brother Roland with the Holy Ghost in fire. You gave him the tongue to let him give. You gave the utterance to let him speak. To try to speak a word. It might be one word, one word. Try to speak it. There you go. Say it again. There you go. Do it again. 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 I got I got four words. And I went back to my bed that night. And I kept saying those four words over and over and over. Same four words, just like you're doing. Amen. Just like you're doing. Yes, yes. And next thing I know, a fifth word came. Yep. And then two more. And by the time I went to bed that night, I was going, hey, I'm like, woo woo. Yeah. That's it, brother. Go hey. no hey. no hey. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, Roland. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is still the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. Yes. He started on the day of Pentecost. He's the same today as he was back then. Yes. yes. And it'll just be, sometimes it's one word. I got four. It seems like you got three or four or five. Yes. You, you just say those one, two, three words over. Yes. And next thing you know, it'll, it'll, it'll begin to flow. Right. It'll begin to flow. Yes. And you then speak in tongues at will. You don't wait for some feeling. He, it's in there. You've been filled with yes. the Spirit. Okay? And Paul says in Corinthians about the Spirit and speaking in tongues. He says, when I speak in tongues, my mind is unfruitful, but my Spirit is giving God praise. Oh, hallelujah. So what yes. will I do? Yes. What should I do? He goes, I will speak with my mind. And I will speak with my spirit. Amen. I will. Notice, he says, I will. I will. You will to. You just will it. You he says, I will sing with my mind. And I will sing with the spirit. Amen. That's why sometimes we're worshiping. I'll just start singing. You will to do it. You don't have to wait for the feeling anymore. You've got an initial feeling. Amen. That fire. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The yeah. fire yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But now you can will it. 
You can yes. speak in tongues in the morning, you can speak in tongues at noon, you can speak in supper time. Amen. Jesus. And the more you do, the more power you'll receive. The more presence it'll put in your life. Amen. 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 Because that's the endowment of power that he talked about in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. It says you will receive power to work dunamis, right? It's where we get our word dynamite from. What it means is miracle working power. Supernatural power. Yes. Yes. Amen. So sometimes when you go to lay hands on the sick, you just start speaking in tongues. And the Holy Spirit will pray through you in accordance with the perfect will of God. That's Romans 8.26. Yes. 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 So many people yep. um, and churches disavow speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Like they just, they don't believe yes. in it. It freaks them out. I know people that I brought here that left here because of it, because they, they don't believe in it or they, it, whatever. Why is it such a yes. hot topic? In so many churches. Excuse me, I got to break down. Because they haven't experienced it. They haven't experienced it. So, since they haven't experienced it, they don't want to admit that they need to or should to. I mean, you don't need it for your salvation, but you you, you really should uh, to, to, to be a bolder witness for Jesus. And so, since they haven't experienced it, um, like the Baptists, for example. Right. Okay. Or the uh, they literally began to develop doctrines yeah. and try to twist the scripture yeah. to say it's called cessationalism, yes. 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 where they said, well, those gifts ceased with the apostles. No. No, they didn't. This is for everybody. Amen. This is for everybody. Joel's prophecy is for all people of all time from that point on. The day is going to come when God's going to proud His Spirit. It started on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago, and it's still being fulfilled to this day. Mm -hmm. Just because you haven't received it. It's like somebody saying, well, I've never been healed, so I don't believe in the doctrine of healing. That's stupid. That's stupid. Just because you haven't received it doesn't mean it's not real. It doesn't mean it can't happen to you the next time. Mm -hmm. Just because you didn't get healed this time. So you still, because why do you believe it? Because the Bible says so. Amen. That settles it. Now it's up to me to choose whether to believe it or not. Okay? So, so Jesus' ministry is baptizing people with the Spirit. And there's no end to that. There's no cessation. So, so that's why. So, so and, and. They preach against it, which is freaky. Okay, let's talk about that. Now I'll share my testimony. If you preach against speaking in tongues, you have endangered yourself of the one sin. There's only one sin that can never be forgiven. Can never forgiven. Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Jesus taught. He was casting out devils. And the Pharisees came up and ridiculed him and says, He cast out devils by the prince of devils. They accused him. Of by the Spirit of God, by the baptism of the Spirit of God, the power of the Spirit of God in him. Was what was he is what he was casting out devils with? They accused that spirit, the Holy Spirit, of being the spirit of Satan. And Jesus said, "I'll tell you the truth: any blasphemy against the Son of Man will be forgiven. Any blasphemy against God the Father will be forgiven. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost will never be forgiven, not in this life, nor in that which is to come." Praise God. So one sin you can't get forgiven. Well, that and taking the mark of the beast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two. Yeah. So why in the world would it? Because if now, if they just preach against it and say it ended with the apostles, that's not blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But what I and I've heard some say this when they say it's of the devil. Yeah, right? then they're wrong. Then they've blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They've yeah. called the work of the Holy Spirit the work of the devil. Yeah. Yeah. That's the blasphemy. That's Just mean. saying you don't believe it, you think it is, that's not blasphemy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. There's still hope. In fact, there's a lot of testimonies of Baptists that used to preach that stuff, and one day, uh, you know, they're in a hotel room or somewhere, and all of a sudden, uh, they're reading the Bible, and all of a sudden the Spirit comes upon them like it did on Roland, and they begin speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Now they're a Baptocostal. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yep. Uh, in fact, there's been people kicked out of the Baptist church. Yes. And just that's, that's kind of where the charismatic movement came out of. Yeah. 
is he, most of these guys were Baptists out of Texas and places, yeah. but they got filled with the Spirit, began speaking in tongues, and their churches rejected them. Said, "Well, we're going to have a church over here somewhere," yeah. and you know, and God blessed, Amen. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so yeah, I, I mean, there's no other, there's no bi biblical reason to reject it. And why does it freak people out? It, I mean, it's what they need. It's what we all need. And here's my testimony. Then we can see if there's any more questions. My testimony was, I was saved. Um, I had answered the call into the ministry, in fact. Um, and I was studying. And uh, we're down in Florida. We had a, a Wednesday night prayer meeting. And it was as small. as like, you know, it, it fluctuated in size. Six, eight, ten, twelve. And I uh, had a, uh, this couple that would come in and run, run the meeting. Uh, they were they were charismatics. They were you know Pentecostal charismatic whatever. But I had not received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. But you know back in that day I was uh, a, a Jimmy Swagger guy. You know right. Mm -hmm. And uh, after church on Sunday we all gathered around the TV and watched Jimmy Swagger. You know, mm -hmm. and um, he spoke in tongues. Uh, and he would even have services where he invite people up to pray for them to all receive the baptism. So I knew it was real and I knew it was biblical and I knew I wanted it. I just hadn't received it yet. And that night at the prayer meeting, two new brothers come in. Oh man, I was so excited. Two new guys. You know, you always want new people, right? And we have the service. We, at the end, at the end, we always would get in a circle, join hands and, uh, and that's another thing, man. First time, you know, you go get around a bunch of Christians, and let's all join hands, you're going to be like, ooh, what? <laughs> I mean, these Christians are weird, man, you know? But when you're not, when you don't have God, that stuff's weird to you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, but then, you you know, you, it, becoming a Christian changes us. Yes. yes. We, yes. we get changed. If you're not changed, maybe recheck your, you know, re, re surrender, right? Mm -hmm. Re surrender. Tell them I just give it all to you, God. Just change me. Make me a new person. Anyway. So we join hands and we're going to prayer. And there was, you know, in this group, three or four other brothers that had been filled with the Spirit and spoken tongues. And so as we go to prayer, um, the leader was like leading a prayer in English, but the other brothers were just praying in the Spirit. And I pray to God. I said, God, please do not let these two new brothers be offended by the other ones that are speaking in tongues. Instantly, I f literally saw, like Roland, you did in your mind. I saw them. I had my eyes closed. And they came down from out of heaven, and it was four words spelled out, Aleje Salom Bakaba. And I started speaking them. Aleje Salom Bakaba. Alehi, which is Alleluia. Salom is peace. I don't know what Bakaba means. Alehi, Salom, Bakaba. So the very thing I was telling God, God, don't let these two new guys get offended because these guys are speaking in tongues. Now I was one of the ones speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. That's right. yeah. God taught me, don't you ever be offended by my Holy Spirit. Yeah. And don't you ever think that that is what's going to turn somebody off because it should. And I'm sad, Cindy. I'm sad. And I know some of who you're talking about that have left this church because pastor and, and other people, we, we, we praise in tongues, we pray in tongues, you know, we preach in tongues, whatever. And, and that saddens me because it's the Holy Spirit. So you're, you're not rejecting me, you're rejecting Him. That's right. And it's sad. And I don't understand. I don't really know why people would reject that. I, I never had that feeling. Now I did in my testimony I just shared. I did think I was worried about offending somebody. It didn't offend me, but I didn't want the new guys to get offended. God says, "Uh, uh wrong attitude, young man. Wrong attitude. Boom. And here I am praying and speaking in tongues." I love it. Yep. What time is it, sweetheart? I don't know. 12.07. 12, 12, let's, let's just take maybe maybe one more. Are, are there any on the on the? No. no nothing on the on the comments. No. Yeah, somebody over here. Francie, I want to go back to what God's going to do when people are in Revelation and they have kids and they haven't accepted. If you go back to the Book of Esther and you read how she came about, which was centuries before Esther.
God instructed a king to totally annihilate a bloodline. They let one queen live who bared a son, who bared a grudge against all Jewish nations. When you move up to Esther, this guy, the son, wanted to kill all Jews. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the whole picture, yes, God was doing genocide. Yes, God wanted that seed wiped out because he knew what was going to happen in the, in the future. On the other hand, we didn't have Christ then. And once Christ came, a lot of things changed. Right. But the one thing I got out of that was God is not always what we consider to be loving and kind. That's not to say he's not. Because he is a just God. Right. And he's going to do what has to be done. And if that is to wipe out an entire sea, children, grandchildren, right. mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, if right. that's what he has to do right. for his kingdom, he's going to do it. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, how he, I he, he wouldn't be loving and kind if he allowed evil to persist. Exactly. He wouldn't be loving and kind if he allowed injustice to prevail. See, so he's loving and kind because he's a God of love. He's a God of justice, too. Right. It wouldn't be loving to, uh, you know, allow uh, somebody who, who's, uh, you know, rock, working evil to go unpunished. Right. Now, his hope is that all the evildoers will repent of their evil and come to Jesus Amen. and get saved. Yes. But yes, you're right, Trent, absolutely. All right, maybe one more. Over here, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Pastor. Yes, you Joe. You know that God is not in time. Correct. Every day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Yes, ma'am. When Jesus comes, we will reign with Him for one thousand years. Yes. Will we be in time, or will we be out of time with God? We will be in time. In time. Okay, because uh, that is a literal thousand years on this earth. Okay, we reign with him on back on this earth. Now the earth is renewed like it was originally in the Garden of Eden. The curse was lifted. Okay, so the curse that came in Genesis three upon the planet, upon the creation, is lifted. So the earth restored. Plus, the earth has been through the seven years of tribulation. So it's it's a lot of damage has been done to it. Yes. Um, so that's all refurbished, renewed. We return with him. Um, at the Battle of Armageddon, then he sets up his kingdom. And, and one of the ways we know it's literally a thousand, twelve month years is because in the book of, we talked about this back on Tabernacles, in the book of uh, Zechariah, chapter 14, speaking of the millennial kingdom, and it says, every year we will go up year to year to Jerusalem to worship the king at the Feast of Tabernacles. And any nation who does not go up to worship the king, there'll be no rain. Well, without rain, there's famine. You've got to have rain to have crops, right? So um, so it's it's a literal, and, and in Revelation chapter 20, uh, it's uh, six times it says a thousand years, a thousand years, a thousand years. So, um, because even though God's outside of time, we're not. So, um, so when he comes back, and when Jesus was here, he was in time. And, and when he returns, you know, in his human form, uh, we're, so we and him will all be in time here on this planet for a, a literal thousand years. And the other humans that are here will be as well. And say, well, how, how can a human live to be a thousand years? They used to. Yeah. Yeah. Back before the flood. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's like that. It's, it's the curse is lifted. And uh, and so people, you know, will live, live to be a thousand years. So there'll be billions of babies born during those thousand years. Um, nobody asked this question, but that's why at the end of the thousand years, Satan must be loosed for a season. He's been, he's been in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Bow. He's been shut up. He's got to be let out. Why? Why? You're like, why, God? <laughs> you got him. Don't let him loose. Because, and the Bible doesn't say this, but you know, sometimes you just got to bring a little together, you know, piece things together. Because there's billions of new humans that have been born by 
the humans that are left made it through the tribulation that never had to choose. They never had to choose. All they knew for a thousand years was Jesus Christ in person, in person, ruling from Jerusalem. And every year they go up, they go up and they see him, and it's wonderful, and there's peace, and the lions laying down the lamb. So you know when, when, when you know when the humans have kids, you know like we got Fernando and Aliana here. Instead of going into cell, going and getting him a dog or a cat, they'll get him a lion or a bear, and they'll they'll ride the lion around the yard. Because there's, it's restored. It's peace. There's, the animals don't hurt anymore, and and so it's it's like it's a wonderful bear. But that's all they've known. They've never had to choose Jesus. So the devil comes out, and he begins to mess with their minds, just like he does now. And it's, unfortunately, it says he deceives many, and they come to attack Jesus and to attack us and to destroy Israel on one final time, Israel or Israel. And, uh, and that's, that's when time ends because then it says fire falls down from heaven and devours them. Well, that's what Peter talks about where he says the, 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 the universe will, will disappear with a great noise. There's your big bang. Yeah. That wasn't at the beginning. Is it going to be at the end though? Uh -huh. And the elements will melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works of the earth will be burned up. Yeah. And then what's the next thing you see in the Revelation? the great white throne judgment and all humanity is there and you better make sure your name is in the Lamb's book of life because if it's not you are cast into the lake of fire forever and ever with the devil and his angels and the false prophet and the antichrist okay after that after that's done and those that are going to hell are in hell those that are going to enter and live with the Lord or with the Lord then God creates a new heaven and a new earth and the new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven to the new earth. And God dwells with man on the new earth forever. And that's the eternal future. And that will be like kind of out of time. Because we're now we're in eternity. So, all right. Well, praise God. I thought it was good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. You know. So, we'll do it again sometime. Amen. Uh, six months or so, I don't know, a year. Amen. Amen. I enjoyed it. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, and, and, and I love Brother Roland's testimony because it was like me, you weren't even seeking it. You weren't saying, Lord, baptize me with your spirit. You were just hard pressed on every side. And you're just, God, I need your presence. Yes. I need your presence. Well, the way he gives you his presence is to baptize you with his spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, I pray for all that are here to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Those that have had an initial, I pray for a fresh feeling. We need to stay on fire. We need to stay filled up. We just be filled, it says in Ephesians 5, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled right now, I pray. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be filled. In the name of Jesus, right now, receive it. Lord, I'm also run the bossy, hallelujah. Cantoro Kora Tata Bosso, Hunda Bossi, hallelujah. I'm telling you, saints, we need this endowment of power for the dark days that are coming. I said, for the dark days that are coming, amen. We need that extra oomph. We need that fuel in our tank, amen. Thank God we're saved, but oh, we need the power. I said, we need the power. Of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And, 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 and I'm just asking right now, Lord, fill everyone. Yes. yes. Receive it. Yes. Yes. You get a thought, you get a word, you get an answer, speak it. But if you don't, right now, in this second, in this minute, keep seeking. My wife. I, after I'd been filled that time, I just shared. 
fact, it was another Wednesday night meeting, and we were praying at the end. And man, I just started praying in tongues, loud though. I mean, I got caught up in it. And I mean, I'm doing like this. I'm jumping. I'm going about sir on the whole day. Oh, and I mean, the glory fell on me, man. I got drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I mean, literally, I could not. Debbie, if your son would have pulled me over, I couldn't have walked a straight line. I mean, I was like, I would have been like this. Whoa. I was walking out of the chapel, and I'm like, whoa. Woo. Yeah. Oh, I'm all sitting there. And I, and I went back, and I picked up the phone, and I called my honey. I said, Sherry, honey, baby. Woo. I just got filled with his glory today, tonight. I says, you got to get filled with the Spirit, honey. Amen. you got to. It's just the most wonderful thing. We hung up the phone, and she went to bed that night. She laid down in her bed. She said, Lord, I want this. Amen. Fill me with your Spirit. Amen. Nothing. Nothing happened. She says, maybe I need to humble myself. Maybe I need to let God know I'm serious about this. Amen. So she crawled out of bed. And what did you do, honey? You got down on your knees. Mm -hmm. That was when I could. Okay. <laughs> Next to the bed. He understands that we can't. Right? So she humbled herself. See, some, sometimes God's wanting to know, how bad do you want it? How, how serious are you about it? You're asking me for something. Are you going to forget about it tomorrow? Or are you serious about this? So sometimes you got to get serious with God. You, you, you know, God's not... God's not not into playing games. He's too busy. He's got too much going on. He's not going to play games. Every little f f prayer we throw up at him, half of them are like, okay, you're asking for that, but tomorrow you're going to forget all about it. So, no. No. I'll give you the desires of your heart. What's your heart want? Not your mind. Mm. See? And she was like, okay. I, and she got down on her knees and Boom! The Spirit came and she began speaking in tongues. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I always want to encourage you. Keep yes. asking. Keep seeking. Yes. Keep knocking. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So everyone in this yes. house is filled. Everyone, Lord. You're young and you're old. You're male and you're female. As Joel prophesied. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men, your old men, your handmaidens. That means the females. And the servants, the men, the men, the women, the old, the young, everybody filled, filled, filled with the Spirit of God, that we can be prophets of God, and that we can be priests of God, and we can be evangelists, and we can be tes testify and be witnesses for Jesus in this hour and in this day. And we can be the light of the world. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we get we just close by saying. Peace be upon Israel. Yes. But not yes. peace by cessation. Peace by victory. Yes. Peace by total annihilation of their enemies. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hallelujah. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe and the notification bell. And God bless you for it.